Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen, and this is Extra Utilities 2. Today we're covering nodes, indexers, inventories, and screens? So to start off, uh, you probably were wondering about these large pictures behind me. That's right, these are in-game. Uh, <laughs> I didn't do, like upload them per se, but uh, basically if you want, you can actually uh, upload images via some kind of site. Uh, per chance imgur uh, by making something called a screen. Now it's a very simple recipe, some stone burt, a couple ender shards, and uh, uh, a resonating redstone crystal. You place one down and it should give you an image like this. You know, you just place it and it'll, it will actually stay uh, vertical. It's not going to be flat, uh, you know, it's because it is a screen, it is intended to be that way. Uh, but upon seeing this, you can expand it further. For instance, I can uh, click here. If I hold shift and right click, I can actually place it on top of the other screens and make it bigger. Uh, it can actually go up to this full size. It is eight by eight is the biggest that you can make it, which makes sense now that I think about it. Uh, you can actually add more screens, but then it'll just add like a black screen border around uh, like two of the sides. So uh, keep in mind that you can only go so big, but uh, there is a size limitation on the image that you want to use. If you right click on the image, it will actually say select screen display image. And if you just hit, you know, control V to paste the uh, the link from Imgur, it will actually fill in the results in here. You can try typing uh, stuff and you can see here that it will actually let me type only in this one space here where my mouser, oh, my mouser, my mouse pointer is currently at. Uh, and you can see the max file size is 256 kilobytes, which isn't too bad. Uh, if you type in something there, it, it'll say no signal. If it's too big, then it'll give you another error. But uh, otherwise, you know, you can use your little like Minecraft, Minecraft screenshots. Uh, you can use your own little logos uh, and, and just make it look like doors into other areas. You know, therefore, it can be uh, a lot of fun and interesting. You can even, you know, look into a very low res version of Skyrim, that this was a much uh, <laughs> better picture originally, but I was able to convert it just by using some of Imgur's options at least without having to go into any kind of uh, uh, paint program or anything. But uh, the reason I'm telling you that is because uh, there may be reasons that you would want to do that uh, or to make one of these, and that is like an indexer here. An indexer, uh, the recipe for it requires a screen as well as some resonating redstone and some more stone burnt. Uh, once again, relatively uh, cheap and inexpensive recipes. With an indexer, you will definitely want to make an indexer remote. Uh, and this is also going to require a screen, a couple of eyes of redstone, and uh, some regular smooth stone. And basically this acts as a remote control. And it does have a certain range. Uh, it, it's not too far, but it's not, uh, you know, too short either. So you can actually go a pretty decent distance from your base and still access it. And it's more or less a uh, beginning base building um, inventory system uh, that you can use uh, to access your inventory, pull things in, uh, in and out of. So how the indexer works is with the indexer remote, you right click on the indexer remote and you'll have a couple different uh, areas here plus an area for uh, inventory and a crafting grid on the side that you can use you can also type to search in the top but before it actually will function if you have an indexer uh, you, you will need to uh, shift right click with your indexer remote uh, to link it up to it and therefore when you right click to open it you see it now has an inventory in there if I want to put some water in there the water will go in eventually it will show up in the inventory you want it you click it you'll have to wait a second and it will come back out it's very low-end inventory this is not going to be any like end game stuff uh, because of you know the delay and so on but if you wanted to make stuff with this you could so do you, you could craft things on the side if you want which is making it at least very convenient uh, for that kind of functionality. Now, give me that lava bucket back here. Uh, if you look here, it is this one here currently doesn't have anything in it. And if I shift right click, you know, there is nothing going on there. But it, it only requires a transfer node and some transfer pipe going to other inventories. Uh, in order for it to function and then it will store in the uh, closest inventories You can add filters and so on and so forth and I'm going to explain how these all work now uh, I will come back to this indexer setup After I explain a little bit more about how nodes work now There are uh, four kinds of nodes, but they're divided into two categories items and fluids here We've got retrieval node 
and here we've got a transfer node. Uh, you can tell by the different colors, and of course when you have them in your inventory it says that that's what their name is. But then uh, with the liquid we've got retrieval nodes, and we've got transfer nodes uh, for fluids as well. And they work very similarly, but uh, they have slightly different functionality. So allow me to explain. Uh, for instance here, uh, if you have a wrench uh, made from a, a, this mod, which, you know, is very simply made, uh, as well as the different uh, uh, nodes are a little bit more expensive, like the retrieval node is uh, a bit more expensive, you might not actually need a retrieval node per se, but, uh, you know, therefore it is a little bit more pricey. Same with this one here, the uh, retrieval flu node for fluids. Those are a bit more pricey, but you you might, you should be able to get away without them for quite some time. Uh, now, the transfer nodes for items. Uh, if you place one down on here, uh, let me show you here. If I just shift right click so that I don't actually enter this inventory, it will place it down, and then you can add on transfer pipes. Shift right click so that you don't enter its inventory. But if you do just right click it, you'll enter the transfer node uh, user interface, which you can add in uh, filters, uh, and then you can add in extra upgrades like speed upgrades or uh, mining upgrades or upgrades, stack upgrades, and so on. And each addition to those, plus the use of indexes, you can see here power drain of eight, uh, each addition of any of the upgrades will also use up more. You see here that this one has max upgrades of 20, and then it tells you the power penalty for using more of them, max upgrades of one, power penalty of 10 GP, and then of course your stack upgrade power penalty of five. So it, you'll want to keep that in mind before you really go too crazy with putting these things on every single inventory that you have, because you might overload your grid power system. But uh, without that there, let's see, uh, all right, so uh, using your wrench, you can effectively change how transfer pipes work in conjunction with transfer nodes. Uh, I'm going to start with the transfer node, the red style here, which is for items, because it is the most basic and, com and uh, common, and it is all you actually have to have in order to make your indexer uh, inventory setup work. Uh, so with that, let's get some filters here. Now, of course, there are other filters as well fluids and items. I'm going to grab one of each just so you can see them here. Uh, and if you put them in your uh, hand, then you can actually filter certain items. You see here, you've got like a, a four by four grid. You can whitelist, match metadata, match MBT, ignore or dictionary. I'm not going to go over those, but basically whitelist will allow, blacklist will disallow. Uh, the rest of it is all matching specific details, making it fuzzy or if it, take, if it can take damage or, or whatnot. Now, if I want, I can say, all right, I want it to whitelist uh, screens, or instead, I want to blacklist screens. You can tell it to not uh, pick up those things. Then you would take this item filter, put it in the side there. Now, if you have so many items that you fill this entire thing up, you know, the entire thing is just filled with stuff, you can nest things. Let's say that you've got all these different types of things in there. You can nest different filters. So you can take another filter, uh, which actually I, I just kind of messed that up by doing that. But let me grab two filters here. There it is. And uh, pick this up here. You can see just by uh, hovering over it that it's got all these screens on there. But if I click that, I can actually take another filter and I can put that in there if I wanted to. It's a little bit weird, but then anything that this filter is uh, including will also be affected as well. So it, it's kind of weird, and it's just a ghost of an item. It doesn't actually take the uh, filter itself. So you can use just like two filters effectively to do everything that you needed. And of course, the recipes for those are really basic as well. You just need access to redstone to really get into this stuff, which isn't too bad. Now, what these slots here are for are mainly the uh, uh, speed upgrades. You know, you can toss in those. You can put in your mining upgrade. Uh, you can put in uh, your stack upgrades, which stack upgrades allows it to take a, a stack at a time when it moves items. Speed upgrade will just increase how fast it works. Uh, I recommend you probably just stick with one or the other. You don't really need to have both, but it, it's entirely up to you if you really want to, you know, overpower things. And if it's constantly pulling stuff, and just keep in mind you might be creating a little bit of lag uh, if you have a ton of these things constantly trying to pull items in inventories. Uh, but that's the same with just about any inventory system. So upgrade of mining allows mining of cobblestone and pumping of water. This is very important. This is a lot of things that is missed uh, by, a, by a lot of people. If you have a cobblestone, a cobble gin uh, where you've got lava and water, 
and you're trying to put down one of these transfer nodes, you now need to put in place a mining upgrade for it to actually pull the cobblestone from between the lava and the water source so that it will actually automatically mine them, then increasing the speed uh, and or the uh, you know stacks as you want from that should prove beneficial. You know, sometimes the speed is better, sometimes the, uh, the stack upgrade is better. Uh, and of course, you can always item filter things as well. Uh, and when it comes to water, remember the same thing, you're going to need that mining upgrade. It is no longer called a world interaction upgrade. Uh, those are a thing of the past. They are now called a mining, uh, or an, a mining upgrade, or an upgrade mining. <laughs> So for these to work properly, uh, you can actually use your wrench to change how these pipes interact. You see here that there is three lines here, which means anything in this chest is not going to go back in, in this direction, or rather the other way around. Nothing is going to go into that uh, side of the chest. Let me break this pipe even. Uh, if I put something in this chest, uh, let's put this, uh, this, no, let's put the, yeah, there it goes. It just took the item there. See, it is stuck in here, has nowhere to go. It is currently in the transfer node, so if I switch this like so, it then hops right into the chest. There we go, and I have my speed upgrade as well. Now it does not take items back out from it, unless of course it's hooked into some kind of item indexer, uh, which this is not the case. But uh, that is something to take into account. If you want to add more transfer pipes, you can effectively change how these are interacting so that they do not go one way or that they do go one way. Uh, this is just making a pipe go one direction. Now if I shift right click on the transfer node, it will then shoot straight off of there and go somewhere unknown. Uh, they they kind of get a little bit glitchy with that. But then you just uh, aim on top of the chest, not on the pipe, and it'll put it back down. Because if you aim at the pipe, it'll put it on the facing that you're actually looking at, which can be rather uh, disorienting. There we go. Now. If you want to use a retrieval node, it acts in the same way, but reverse. So effectively, there's nothing in this chest, nothing in this chest. That's right, I'm doing kind of a magic trick. But if I put the water bucket in the back chest instead of the front, you'll note that it comes to the front chest instead. So it is currently pulling from all inventories into this chest. So it can be extremely beneficial if you want to have everything being pulled forward into something instead of this going back into multiple inventories. So that is how that is used. And you would think that you would need that in order to access the items from the indexer, but that's what the indexer does. It allows you to uh, not have to use that because it is a rather expensive thing. And making your indexer uh, set up is going to be relatively cheap. So now that you understand the basics of at least the transfer node, I'm going to show you a basic indexer system, which I have currently a transfer node back here. A whole bunch of pipes, and I've got three different upgrades uh, for these in each of the chests. And if I shift right click on this here, you can see that in here, of course, I have stuff typed in. Let me back that up. There we go. And now you can see all the inventories are currently here. As before, I click on it. I have to wait in order to get it. Now, I can't just put it back in here. I could put it over here and use it to craft with if I want, but I have to put it at the bottom. If I shift click, you'll see that the stack goes in there and it will eventually, very slowly, go back in, in there. It, it's rather annoying. So therefore, I do recommend at least a few of your, um, oops, I, I just totally did not want to do that there. There we go. Boy, I'm having a tough time. Let me get that off of there. <laughs> uh, so what you'd want to do there we go, is put some speed upgrades on there, and that should help speed things along considerably. They are a little bit more pricey. Not really. I mean, it requires a little bit of gold and some redstone, really, uh, plus access to other stuff. But let's say that I want all of those. It, it's going to take a bit. You know, you have to shift left click instead of just click, and you see it gives you one at a time regardless. That's the disadvantage of this inventory system. It is a beginner system. So I can feasibly uh, put one... In there and there we go and it currently oh I, I actually already had one go back in but there you go you see here that it is allowing those to go back in now remember how those are set up one one and one oh look at that they're all in the front now that's because these do not have any kind of filters on the back now you'd think oh do I therefore have to put a transfer node on the back of every single one of these no you don't you can put instead a transfer filter which will better uh, uh, filter things into the chest that you want. Uh, so in this case, 
if I aim at the pipe, it'll go somewhere on this pipe. So don't aim for that. Aim for the face that you want it to go on if it's connected to something already. Otherwise, you can put it directly on a pipe. You know, it'll it'll be a little bit awkward. Uh, you know, so therefore you don't want to do that if you can avoid it. But uh, if you aim at the face that is currently connected to Shift, right click. It will put it on that connection. Then you can right click it. You can then add in some kind of flu or filter on here as you want. Unlimited single items, single stacks, etc. And you can filter your results into each and every single one of those chests as you desire so that they no longer will try and combine to the closest inventory uh, and kind of mess things up. Now, of course, those same uh, transfer filters will work with fluid, and the uh, transfer pipes will work with fluid as well. You'll notice here that I have some stone drums sitting on top of these transfer pipes. They are currently not being filled with water, because this one here does not have the mining upgrade. If I put that in there, it will slowly start filling with water, and you can see here 400, 600, 800, and so on. I can also add some upgrades, and therefore it's going to speed up much quicker and fill up to the maximum extremely fast. Now let's take these back out and let's go over to this one and we've got a retrieval node. Well, let's put this in and we'll put some of these in and you can see that it has water in it, but it, it doesn't seem to be filling the, the drum. This one was filled from earlier. In fact, let me grab uh, an empty drum here and I will just put down a fresh one if I don't stand in the same spot. Right click this and it says empty. It is not currently filling it. So the reason for that is that this uh, is kind of, it, it kind of acts differently. It, it doesn't really, it's not meant to mine per se. Um, it, it's a liquid uh, item here, but you're going to want to use it in a different manner. So if I use it on, let's say, this drum here, I will want to use it separately. So here, let's uh, see if I can actually shift, place it there. And remember, it works in reverse. So I want to do that, and then that should feasibly start pulling water into the drum. Now the water didn't necessarily, it, the drum didn't change color, but you can see that it is currently working, and therefore I can put the uh, speed upgrades in there, and it should speed up much, much faster. And it's going to pull the water out of this one into this one, and there you go. So that is how it, it works. Remember, this pulls from another uh, entry. This will fill into an entry. So therefore, this one's expensive, that one's cheap. <laughs> Red and blue for the win, uh, teal and green for uh, more end game type stuff. So there you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed this bit by bit on Extra Utilities 2, how to use the nodes, indexer, screens, and a little bit more. So if so, please give a like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and spread the mischief to others if you think they'll enjoy this content. Until next time, folks, I'll see ya.